Father's Day to everybody. Uh, man, really great day for us. Uh, finalized a couple things with our red zone packages, both offensively and defensively. I really did a lot of work uh, defensively on the on the 22 package that uh, that uh, Stanford presents when they bring all the extra linemen in. So worked heavily on that today. Really nice day. These guys are excited to get on a plane tomorrow and have a great opportunity to represent USC and win a Pac-12 championship. With that, I'll take any questions that you have. Is it like quiet before the storm now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say that. I, I, I've really been uh, really, really pleased with the kids. Their focus, almost laser focus in this preparation. They're, you know, we usually have a lot of energy and that's a given, but these guys have really been assignment attention to detail this week that I really appreciate uh, and expect from them. So uh, very pleased where we're at right now. How, how much better is your team right now as opposed to the first meeting? Uh, I, I'm going to say this. Um, I'm really pleased with the progress that we've made. We're not a finished product yet, but we're going towards the direction that we want to go as a, as a team. And you've seen the physicality standpoint. The reason we're winning ball games is because of our offensive line and defensive line. The, the trenches are being won right now. And, you know, I think the I, I think the backs are starting to get the physicality of the running south, especially Justin Davis right now, as you see, and, and Trey Madden in those third down runs. And then Ronald Jones will be thrown in there. I can't wait to to see him this Saturday. I just got a feeling the man's going to make a great explosion play for us. Do you think the fact that you guys have played them and it was a good game, mm -hmm. it kind of gives the team confidence despite the fact that Stanford's been like a top five, top yeah. 10 team all year? Yeah, you know, we've played some really good teams. You know, we've, we've played at Utah as the number three team in the nation at the time and had, a, had won a top 25 team in UCLA and won, you know, and we played good against a Notre Dame team, good against um, good against a Stanford team that was, that's, we feel is un unbelievably talented, but we didn't execute in both those games, especially down the stretch, you know, and that's what I've told them. That we got to put four quarters together. You're 31 to 24 at Notre Dame against a really good team going in the fourth. You have the lead. We didn't execute in the fourth. Same thing at Stanford. You know, we had the lead, you know, late in that ball game, and then all of a sudden we don't have a great fourth quarter, and they win, they pull away in the end. We feel we are a very talented team. We just got we have to execute for four quarters. That's a good question. You're a quarterback, Scott. If you had the opportunity, would you use the, uh, the virtual reality stuff that Stanford's using if they would? I, I tell you what, we actually um, we actually looked into it, and we had a meeting about a month ago with the same group that is uh, that is using it. Unbelievable product. It's something that I think is probably. Um, you know, really the forefront of where college football is headed to uh, the technology side, and um, it's a really, it's a, it's a really good product. We're looking into it all the off season. Uh, obviously, you don't instill something mid season, but it, I, it, it is a great off season tool. And you can see, I mean, Kevin's Kevin's had a heck of a year. If that's the byproduct of it, but mercy, what a what a great product. Are you allowed to? As a Pac-12, are, are other Pac-12s allowed to use that? Yeah, there's there's other teams that are using, but I think both pro and college that are using. I don't know the exact number. Um, but um, there are other teams that are, that are using it right now. now. Coach, do you believe in the saying it's very difficult for one team to beat another team twice in the same year? <laughs> well, you can do it. it. It does happen. I just I appreciate the fact we're playing another team twice. That usually means good things are happening to you. But really, the, the thing that really hits home with you um, that you don't know when you're playing the first time is the personnel matchups. You, you now physically see a McCaffrey live, and, and you see how talented he is out of the backfield, how well he runs routes, um, and that matchup in some man-to-man -man coverages. You see how big Hooper is, and, and that and that physicality that he brings, and that route running ability, his ability to catch balls with guys hanging on him. So the personnel matchups are the biggest key going into the second time, and how you match up certain people with certain people, kind of like we did last week with Sue and, and last week with uh, Biggie. You know, being able to match them up on the right side. Body types. Having, like you're saying, playing well on the offensive and defensive lines mm -hmm. through the stretch, um, Stanford is kind of noted for its physical play. You mm -hmm. schemed against them for a number mm -hmm. of years. Mm -hmm. are, are they going to be the most physical team that you guys will have played? I, I'll say they are extremely physical, if not, if not the one of the most. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, they, they've done it year after year after year. It's part of it. What, what I've been really 
uh, neat to see their progression is they're actually using their skill a lot more than they have in the past. And that's a, gr a good a sign of a good coach, which I, mm -hmm. I have the utmost respect for David. He, he does a good job of getting the right people in the right place. And he's got some really talented, skilled people. And he's doing a good job of balance, you know, mm -hmm. of being able to run the ball. But he's also letting Kevin throw the ball uh, to, you know, whether it's Rector, you know, uh, whether it's Hooper, whether it's McCaffrey and, and more. They, they've done a really nice job of not only being that power team, but actually spreading you out some too. So it's a challenge, and they create a great challenge. And then the quarterback can run too. They have every asset uh, that you want. With the excitement on your team right now, are you at all concerned about calming them down before the big game on Saturday? Well, I, I tell you, I, I would say, Jim, that you know we've kind of been in playoff football every game. It's kind of been a championship <laughs> game. It's almost been win or go home every game. Yeah. Um, so it, this is just the next one. I like where we're at because we've had that mentality basically since the Notre uh, after the Notre game on. We knew to be able to make this run that we had to take that approach, and every game was win or win or, win or go home championship mentality. So I like our approach to it, and this it just feels to me like it's the next game. It's the next playoff game. It just happens to be week 13 for the Pac-12 championship. Are McQuay and Messina going to be available? I think I think Osa is going to be available. He, he looks really good. I think McQuay, uh, Leon will be really, really close. Uh, he's starting to feel better. I think now we can use him for emergency purposes if we had to. We'll see where he's at on Saturday, but Osa is looking very good. I'm going to say a couple prayers, and uh, you know we've held him. Um, I know his mindset is that he wants to play. Um, you know, obviously we'll see where the ankle is. You know, a high ankle sprains are tough. Um, you know, especially when you're that big a man. Um, he is doing a lot better than he was two days ago. We'll get him moving around uh, tomorrow a little bit and see exactly where it's at, and then it'll be a game time decision. Um, but we practiced Nico all week, ready for it, and he's taking a lot of mental reps and a lot of film time. One more. Y'all are awesome. Thank y'all.